without further ado, I think that we will hand over to John, who's just setting up their slides. But here we are. There we go. Uh, hello. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, You're a bit quiet, but I think we can do that, fix that on our end. So. Uh, oh, that's good. Okay. Shall I just go ahead and get started? Yeah, go for it. Okay, if it's been excellent slides so far, this uh, this convention, this conference, I think conference is the best uh, word. Uh, and my slides are mostly just to uh, keep me on track and make the things that I'm talking about seem a little more real. I have lots of screenshots. Um, my, my purpose here is to give you an overview of the Mystery Dungeon series of roguelikes from Chunsoft in Japan. Uh, there are many more of these than you might think there are. I My count goes 31, maybe a little, maybe plus or minus one or two. Um, there, There's just so many of them, and uh, my book, A Wee Heart Mystery Dungeon on itch.io, hopefully a version for limited run games uh, before long, I, uh, I, I go into excruciating detail about all of them. That I, that I could. But let's go ahead and get started because I have a lot to cover in only half an hour. Uh, so, yes. All right. Now, the Mystery Dungeon games are a long-lived series of roguelike games uh, made by Chunsoft. Uh, they are heavily inspired by Rogue and Hack. And throughout the years, they have kept that, uh, that inspiration. Uh, so that now they're some of the most classical roguelike games you can find that are still being developed and made besides things that you know individuals make on their own it's a classic style roguelike it's a turn-based procedurally generated dungeon exploration game with lots of tricky monsters lots of weird items to find uh item identification in many of them challenging gameplay and of course permadeath which means something different in mystery dungeon than it does in say rogue or nethack uh, anyway, my worries here. I am hopelessly obsessed with Mystery Dungeon. I have played most of these myself. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, those that I couldn't play, mostly it's because they're lost. Uh, there are two or three Mystery Dungeon games, a few of them that apparently there are no, there's no surviving copies of, that, or at least you can't find them on anywhere. Uh, I've tried to translate my obsession in such a way that you might find them interesting as well, but I had to leave out a lot. This is only a surface exploration. Okay, so, now, oh, Chunsoft. Um, uh, they're the developers of the original Dragon Quest 1 through 5 on the NES and, uh, uh, oh, it's Famicom, really, and Super Famicom. They merged with Spike in 2012 and became Spike Chunsoft. Chunsoft also makes the, I believe, the Dagon Rampa games. Uh, they make a lot of visual novels um, and a few other little projects. Uh, they, they still sort of kept the soul of the company alive throughout all this time, which is great considering how Square just seems like completely different people now. Early games are directed by Tadashi Fukuzawa, and they're produced by company founder Koichi Nakamura. I think they're both still involved with them today, but I'm not sure. Um, so the origins, it was 1993 with Torneko no Daiboken, Fushiji no Dungeon, where Super Famicom. By the way, the images here are from a fan translation, uh, a hack, and I've tried to use fan translation images when available if uh, in my screenshots, just so that they are com comprehensible to an English-speaking audience. Uh, yeah, so there have been more than 30 Mystery Dungeon games, which I'll just give them a quick... My, my uh, rendering, my, my listing of them is Torneko no Daibokin 1 through 3, uh, which have different names. Shirin 1 through 6 and their remakes. Shirin for Teleview, which is very obscure now. Shirin Game Boy and Game Boy 2. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon 1 through 6, we'll get to that in a bit, and their alternate versions. Chocobo Mystery Dungeon 1 to 3 and its remake for the Switch. Edgy Mystery Dungeon 1 and 2, 2 never made it to the United States. Rainbow Labyrinth was a mobile version that never left beta and only lasted a few months. They tried a free-to-play experiment with it. Azuka Kinsen is for the Dreamcast. 
Twin B Dungeon and Kido Senshi Gundam, I think, were both mobile games, and they're no, and apparently those are lost. Nightmare Dragon for PS2, Young Yangus for PS2, Mystery Chronicle One Way Heroics on Steam, and took about two days, Our Errors In, which I know little about. So, crossovers! You may have noticed that it's, it's very promiscuous, you might say, and crossing it with other properties. The Herb of Mystery Dungeon Games, the Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, Etrian Odyssey, Twin Bee, Gundam, Tower Dragon, and especially Pokemon franchises. Oh, where's my areas? So, the Mystery Dungeon Games, especially the Sheeran Games, they give you lots of items. They're basically about resource management and positioning. It's up to you to figure out how to use both of these uh, resources to survive. Uh, like, for items, the knockback staff, if you find one, you can wave it at a monster to knock it backwards some distance to give you a little bit of escape room or to, to get time to use other items. Uh, an herb, you, if you eat one to heal you, but if you're at full health, you can eat it to gain maximum hit points. There's a lot of trade-off like that. Use it now or, you know, for an immediate advantage against the monsters or use it later for a more long-term advantage. So. Uh, School of Confusion can temporarily incapacitate a whole room of monsters. The game is basically about using these items. I sometimes refer it as uh, being about the creative application of bullshit. Uh, it's all the tricks that you can, that you have up your sleeve that you can find, to feel them against the monsters, because you'll need them. That's, and, but escaping by the skin of your teeth, that's the essence of, the, of these games. And once you're into it, they can be lots of fun. So, here are some example monsters from the Sheeran games. The boy boy over there, that's a missile user. They just shoot arrows at you from a distance. The ghost radish throws poison grass at you that slows you down. Kakaroids, they're fast and they set traps to cause problems for you. The rice changer over here, this uh, handsome red fellow, uh, can turn your items into rice balls, whether you want them to or not. Sometimes you do. Often you don't. And the thief walrus hit over here, Steals items, both from your inventory and right off the ground. They're a bit troublesome that way. So there's some weird games. There's a lot of weird games in the Mystery Dungeon series, befitting its, its longevity and all the things it's crossed over with. Etchid Mystery Dungeon has this interesting mechanic where there's a side view of the dungeon you're in, and periodically tough monsters called does, which doesn't sound like it would be a, a dangerous monster, but they are in this game. Uh, and they have a position in the dungeon, and they're climbing up the dungeon as you're descending down through it. And you have, they're trying to attack a town if they manage to get to the top, and you have to find various ways to turn them back, which adds a, a nice, a nice uh, danger uh, management aspect to the game. And you can build fortresses in the dungeons to defend against them. It's, it's an interesting idea. Uh, Mystery Chronicle One Way Heroics is, I think, only on Steam. It's a remake of another game, I think called One Way Hero. Um, it plays almost exactly the same as that game, but it's got the Mystery Dungeon control scheme, which is a lot easier to learn. In that game, you're running to the right on a single huge level throughout a landscape from a wall of doom approaching from the left. Uh, and, let's see, uh, there are three Chocobo games uh, for the PS1 and later for Wii and Switch. And they all have unique aspects to them. Like the first one tries to adapt Final Fantasy's active time battle system to, to the game. And I don't think it's really a successful ex experiment, but it's interesting. Uh, it, uh, mystery Dungeon games are always trying to do weird things. And it's what make, part of what makes them so fascinating to me. There's just so many interesting ideas there. Uh, some more games. Nightmare of Duaga is very different in style. I think it uses a completely different engine. Most of the Mystery Dungeon games control very similarly, but not that one. And it's got a weird uh, system of secrets where every level has a secret item on it if you do some mysterious thing. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm going by memory for a lot of these. Cause there's so much to remember. Uh, and then, of course, there's the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, which are unquestionably the best known. Ugh. The Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, they've sold, outsold the entire rest of the series combined. And it's difficult to overstate how much money this has made Nintendo and Chunsoft. 
No Pokemon Mystery Dungeon has sold less than a million units. The Explorer series has Explorers of Time, Explorers, I forgot that one, Explorers of Sky. Uh, they've sold six million. That's a huge hit by any standards. Uh, there's more people who, many people have never heard of roguelikes have enjoyed Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. It's just the, the, the sheer power of the brand of Pikachu. The house the rat built. Um, uh, at the Dragon Con one year, and there was someone who was asking a huge game uh, dealer about about trying to identify this game they'd heard of, about having a character in a dungeon that's randomly generated and having to fight out monsters. And I, told, and I overheard, and I said, that's obviously Mystery Dungeon. And he said, no, it doesn't do with Pokemon. I had to roll my eyes at that a bit. Um, all right, we're mostly going to... But the rest of the talk to is Sheeran the Wanderer, which is sort of the home series of, uh, of Mystery Dungeon. Um, the first game was a Dragon Quest crossover, uh, but the, uh, the, the, the roguelike ideals, uh, the game concepts, get their clearest expression in the Sheeran the Wanderer games, which takes place in a fantasy version of feudal Japan. It stars Sheeran, the, uh, the handsome guy in the rain hat there, and his talking weasel companion, Kappa, who is uh, in his first appearance on the right. Uh, Kappa is a lot more cute in more recent games, but he's adorable regardless of what he's in. So, uh, classic roguelikes present each game session as a self-contained unit. When a character dies, the next game starts, for the most part, from scratch. You re-invoke the game program. And then you create a new character, and then you make another attempt, and that character dies or wins. The game, uh, the game exits. With Mystery Dungeon, though, poses each adventure as one of the series. If your character, your character doesn't die on failure, but collapses and is kicked out of the dungeon without their stuff, and usually you always start at level one regardless. If you manage to complete the dungeon without collapsing, you get to keep your stuff, which usually makes later runs a lot easier. Um, Mystery Dungeon games have plot lines that can carry over from session to session. Like, in the, rich, in the first game, she, there's one town that has a struggling restaurant in it. And Shirin can contribute money to get it on its feet. And if you keep supporting this restaurant every time you traipse through town, uh, it eventually becomes a resource that you can rely on when you pass through on later runs. And eventually it unlocks a food-based bonus dungeon, like a, its own little special mini-game to explore. And the Mystery Dungeon games are full of things, but the Shira games are especially. Those are the games where you find this type of thing most often. So, there are six of these, and I see we have about 13 minutes left, which is good time. So, the first one, Furai no Shirin, um, was for the Super Famicom, 1993. They got a somewhat different, expanded Nintendo DS remake, it got an English release, and it was actually released in the United States, and it was published by Sega. You can see the box art in the lower right corner, and it is pretty ugly. Yeah, it, I don't know what it is about the Japanese games released in the United States that they always give them ugly box art. Well, not always, but it, it's like a worse version of the angry of the American Kirby phenomenon. Uh, it's got very chaotic and challenging gameplay. And it's a legendary fan translation that you can play uh, by Eon Genesis. I've got uh, the URL for that at the end of the talk. It's got tough monsters. The game is balanced very hard. You will struggle with this one until you get good at it. But you can complete it on your first try. And I've done that a couple of times on a, a new save file. And it's great to try it. Um, uh, a lot of Mystery Dungeon games try to weight the item generation. I... The more powerful, more interesting items don't appear until later on. But uh, the first Sheeran game, you can find great items early, and they can just completely change the nature of your entire run. That's like a bit like NetHack in that regard, and I think it's one of the, the, the best reasons to play the first game. Uh, there is a special tutorial in it called Phase Problems that you can... Uh, they're they're non-random situations that are like little puzzle games. And those are fun to play just on their own. And every time you begin a new run, you get to try one of Faye's problems. And if you succeed at it, you get a random item to help you on, on that particular journey. 
It doesn't have any bonus dungeons, but it's still a favorite in the series, and it's still one of the more popular, one of the more popular renditions. Okay. So there was a Game Boy version of Shivan. Now, Mystery Dungeon has a set control scheme uh, that really takes advantage of you know more modern controllers that have shoulder buttons and four buttons under uh, the four face buttons and a start select and other buttons. They take advantage of all of them. Imagine trying to condense that down to a Game Boy control scheme with its four buttons, period. But they made a, 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 a good, a, a good, a, a good, had a good stab at it. Um, there's no fan translation of this one. You, you'd have to really learn Japanese or use an item cheat sheet. I provide one in my book, actually. But on this one, all the text is hiragana or katakana. There's no kanji. So uh, it's pretty, it's relatively easy to read. Uh, the same I can't say for uh, the Shiren for Game Boy Color, uh, which does use kanji in its item names, and which makes it a bit more difficult. Not as much kanji as the games usually use. This one also does not have a fan translation. One interesting thing that you can vaguely see in the bottom right corner is when there are menus open, the game tries to fake transparency. It, you can see like a, a transparent version of Sheeran there in the middle of the screen. Uh, it's just one of the many little touches that, that the Mystery Dungeon games get put into them. It's it, it, there's no reason for them to do it really. It's just it's just it's just nice. Uh, Sheeran Two was released uh, in Japan only for the Nintendo 64. They focused on a child version of Sheeran. This one is specifically made to be played many times. Instead of playing and dying and playing and dying and then eventually succeeding and then you win, you're meant to play its main dungeon many times. And you're doing this to pick up materials that appear in the dungeon and use those to construct parts of a castle to defend a town from invading Oni. And the castle gets broken down as they attack, but eventually you complete the castle. And once you do that, you can take the fight to the Oni in, a, in an in-game dungeon. Uh, oh, okay. There's a message there. Right? Sorry. Um, anyway, it introduces mixers, which are an interesting kind of monster uh, that's almost more of a resource than a photo fight. If you throw two swords at a, mix, at a mixer monster, inside the, 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 mix, the mixer will eat them, and their attributes will be combined together. And if you kill the monster, then... The, uh, the, the, sword, the combined sword will be left on the ground for you to pick up. And you can make super items this way. You can do it with swords or shields or wands. And it's an, it's an important aspect of the game to increase the number of abilities that you can field in battle at once. The problem with mixers, though, is every item that you eat makes them stronger. So you have to be sure that you can defeat the monster before you embark on such a foolhardy plan. Uh, Una Kenshi Azuka Kinzan, uh, for the Dreamcast is, uh, one of the few role-playing games released in the Dreamcast before it shut down. And, annoyingly, it never, it was never released up to I of Japan, where I'm sure it would have sold well here because we only got, like, three role-playing games for the Dreamcast during its entire short lifetime. I hear it was a PC version, but I didn't know much about it. It focuses on Shiren's sister-like gal pal Azuka, was introduced in Shiren 2. Uh, he here fights against ninja in addition to the standard mystery dungeon monsters. There is a translation patch in the works by a wonderful person named Sharksnack who's made several, or is working on several translation patches for these games. There's a link to his Discord at the end of the presentation where you can find them yourself. I found out to my dismay, though, that the game doesn't fit completely on a burnt CD. Many Dreamcast games can, and you can play them right off of a burnt CD. But not this one. You'll get like half, like ten levels into the dungeon and the game will crash. Which I discovered in my dismay long ago. So I still have never played most of this game. Uh, which is a shame because it looks really interesting and it's got some items and monsters that don't appear in other games. Then there was the one for the Wii. Which is probably the worst one in the series. And sadly it was... It was when uh, Chunsoft finally decided to try to take a stab at making the series popular in the United States. Um, it, it abandoned permadeath for much of it. I mean, you still lose your items if you die, but your experience level doesn't reset to one usually. So it encourages grinding 
playing levels over and over again to gain an edge on the dungeon instead of making do with what you've got and trying to survive. Though it's probably the weakest in the series. But it is the first one in full 3D. The, graph, uh, the dungeons are completely 3D modeled and aren't like sprites that are zoomed in like the N64 one and the Dreamcast ones do. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I had what I thought was a very annoying story. There's, uh, there's like your standard JRPG betrayals and uh, party infighting. It's sometimes difficult to like some of your teammates, but on the plus side, this is the only game in the series where if you want, you can completely control all of your party members at once every turn. It makes the game much slower. But during boss fights, it makes for a very interesting challenge. You can just, each of your characters, you get to decide what they do each turn. They all share a common inventory. So you can adapt some wonderful, store, uh, wonderful strategies to take out the boss fights, which are interesting, but a bit gimmicky, I thought. Anyway. I'm sticking closely to the slides because I don't want to run over. I've got five minutes left. Uh, we're, there's only three more games to talk about. she 4 was released on Nintendo DS. There's another fan, tra 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 fan translation of it by Shark Snack. I'm talking quickly and trying to get through this. she 4 and 5 were originally released within months of each other in Japan, and they used the same engine. And they mostly have the same monsters and items. They feel like like the same game with a different scenario. she and Papa visit a tropical island whose residents are beset by an awakening god. Those darn gods, they're always causing trouble. Yeah. It probably wasn't released outside of Japan due to questionable illustrations of native islanders, which do make the game a little icky to play, I would have to admit. It also contains an American character, which sort of wrecks the whole idea that this is the fantasy version of feudal Japan. Uh, that's Millie, who apparently uh, hails from Texas and who wields revolvers. There are a lot of fun characters like that throughout the series. Uh, Fear and 4 and 5 have a day-night system. At a certain point in the game, it'll start a timer. And after a certain time after that, a certain number of moves, night will fall. And the, the, ga the gameplay will completely change. At night, uh, all the monsters are taken out of the dungeon and replaced with different monsters that are much stronger and can probably kill you in one or two hits. And the game becomes much more of a stealth game. And your items stop working against them so well. And, and because of that, because Mystery Dungeon is, as I put before, like the creative application of bullshit, uh, fewer strategies seem to work at, at night. And if you like the daytime gameplay, then you're going to hate the night game. And if you end up liking the nighttime gameplay, you're going to hate the day game. Um, so it doesn't really fit together, I think, but it was an interesting experiment, and the, as I said, the Mystery Dungeon games are full of interesting experiments. They always try to shake the game up with ne each new addition. I'm sorry to be tripping over my tongue so much. Then we come to she 5, The Tower of Fortune and the Dice of Fate, which, up to 2020, uh, was the last of the Mystery Dungeon games that we had seen. Or actually, the last of the Sheeran games. There were a couple of others. Uh, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX for Switch was released, uh, I think, in 2022. Um, uh, it was the last new Sheeran game. Uh, it was originally released in 2010, which is a, a long time between new installments. Sheeran's trying to save the life of his sixth, uh, of the beloved of a uh, friend of his by daring to roll the Dice of Fate, an artifact of the god Riva. It's another of those troublesome gods. Yeah, Riva ultimately turned out to be a pretty good beast deity. It was given a full English release on Steam and Switch, and this is where, uh, I think, this is about the time, I think, when people in the West really started to notice the Mystery Dungeon games, because... Shiren 5 actually sold a good number of copies, like 200,000, which is pretty good for a Mystery Dungeon game. And on the Switch, it was fairly popular. Uh, it keeps the day-night system of Shiren 4, and it has a fairly long main dungeon. So it is a real ch and you have to play through it longer and longer versions of it until you get the full version. 
Uh, so it's a real challenge to get through it. And to win, you not only have to finish it, you have to get your friend through the whole thing, too. Which makes it uh, uh, quite the ordeal. But it's doable. Yeah, you can do it. I believe in you. It's got a huge number of bonus dungeons. The original they released is paid DLC, but the Switch version, they just give them all to you for free. There's like 20 or 30 of them, and lots of them are tons of fun. There's one that plays like Minesweeper. Uh, there's another one that plays like Sokoban, but with monsters in it. Uh, I know that people who are familiar with NetHack might be having a panic reaction from me saying that. It's got a huge amount of replay value. You can play this game for, for dozens of hours. Just, yeah, even after you finish the bonus dungeon, there's a huge amount of things to try and play around with. Oh. There's one dungeon where you never advance past level one, and it's a short dungeon, but you basically are running from monsters the entire time. Uh, and it feels really great once you can pull it off. It has a system of new items where you can create new items that appear in the dungeons after you've created them. Uh, which suddenly changes the whole game from that point on. And your swords and shields have their own experience totals and can gain levels themselves and become more popular. Uh, it's more popular? I mean, more powerful. Ugh. And finally, we're at 645 now, and I will finish up. This is doing Sheeran 6. Until January of this year, that was the whole story. But then... Harkened, I guess, by the how well Sheeran 5 did. I think right with that 200,000 units figure. I, I'm not sure if we actually know how many Sheeran 5 sold, but we know that it did well. Uh, Sheeran 6 sold 200,000 units in its first month in Japan, oh, Japan alone. We don't know, apparently, how well it's done in other territories. But th the rumor is that they're planning a seventh game in this series now, so it has to have done pretty well. Anyway, it's the first games at Sheeran 3 to be in full polygonal 3D. And the graphics are great in this one. They really did a good job of adapting that 2D Super Nintendo S style that most of the games have to the modern era at last. Um, let's see. Anyway, Sheeran and Kappa this time are investigating the cause of a mysterious drought, which of course means competing a number of mystery dungeons to solve it. And of course, there's weird gods involved. Uh, it was intended to be a back-to-basics game. They cut the day and night and the equipment experience systems, which I think is a positive choice. Uh, so the game plays more like a traditional roguelike game. But it still has some interesting new ideas in it. And one of them are behemoths, which are huge monsters that appear on certain levels. You're properly warned if there aren't a level with behemoths on it. And even if the level is dark, if you don't see further around you than the room you're in, you still get to see behemoths regardless of whether they should be visible. Behemoths can usually kill you in one hit, but they move slowly. And, uh, and even though you can only attack them if you can attack them from behind or if you can throw something like over the barrier in front of them onto their heads, they all have like one hit point. So it's an interesting challenge, uh, and it's not going to be that hard once you learn how to, how to deal with them. I hope this is interesting. I'm obsessed with these games, and I'm trying to, to translate that obsession to you as best as I can. <laughs> anyway, it's still receiving updates. Uh, it's got, it's already had one, a couple of DLC releases. It's just had a paid DLC with some more dungeons in it. And if you buy it now, there'll be more that you'll get for free. Uh, I think in a month or two. Uh, and Chunsoft is sometimes now releasing special event dungeons uh, that you can play and you can try to be try to finish it in a limited time, competing against other players around the world. After so much without uh, hearing from the Mystery Dungeon game, it's great to see more activity from it because it's really an institution. It's it's lasted for so long at this point, and there are many se game series that have died out over the decades. And yet this one, one of the most niche and esoteric of them all, is still, it's still going. And it looks like it will still be going for some more time to come. Yeah, that's how 40 does. Okay. And that's everything. 
Thanks for watching. I hope this has inspired you to look into these weird games. Shiren 6 is on on the Switch. Uh, it's the only system it's out for right now. It's $59.99, but I think it's well worth it. Yeah, there, there's so much gameplay on this. I played a ton of Shiren 5, but I have easily eclipsed it in, 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 in playing through Shiren 6. Even though Shiren 5 has so much content in it. So, here are the links to Aeon Genesis uh, translation patch, the Shark Snacks uh, patches in his Discord, their Discord, uh, the Grog Pod Roguelike podcast on the Sheeran games, the ish episode of Roguelike Radio that we did featuring me and Keith Bergon back from 2011, and there's my itch.io page where you can get We Heart Mystery Dungeon, which has all of this in greater detail, and my book on Amazon on playing Roguelike games from my old at play column from Games Up Watch. Thanks for having me. I hope this was entertaining for you. And that's everything. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, John. I think, yeah, the enthusiasm is infectious. And I think it's been a great, I, I don't know how anyone could listen to that and not be convinced to go pick up a Mystery Dungeon game. So, <laughs> Thank you. Uh, wonderful. And yes, your breakout room will be Goblin Singers. So if people want to talk oh. more about the Mystery Dungeon franchise, they can do that after this next talk. All right.